Hey everyone, Drew from Moon Audio here with Ricky to talk about this past weekend. We were up in Schaumburg, Illinois, near Chicago to attend the Audio Expo North America, or Axpona for short. So I was thinking, how about we sit down and recap the show, share our highlights, and what we're excited about now that the show's over. I like the sound of that. So to talk about some of the items that we had at the show and, and one of the most popular things on the table because so many people had questions about, hey Drew, where do I sort of start with an all-in-one headphone amp, streamer, mm -hmm. DAC, you know, a, a kitchen sink, if you will, product. The thing that comes to mind always for me are the Matrix Audio products. I mean, all of their products do so many things and they've got multiple price points, you know, so no matter what budget you have, there's something in there for you. And so we had the uh, um, the Element I2 and the Element M2 there this, mm -hmm. this show. We didn't bring the X2 because we had that at the Florida show last time. Um, and so people got to demo between the two of them. And as you go up each tier, with the different prices, things like lower noise ratio, uh, balanced, um, you know, the addition of analog inputs on the X2, you know, you get additional features, additional better specs, et cetera, as you go up the line. So this is probably one of the most popular things at the table because there were so no, so many newbies at the show this yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't seen this many people at Axbona, I think since, honestly, since I started doing the show. It was really packed with people and lots of new people trying to get into this stuff. Yeah, the, I mean, the Element Series, super popular. Great all-in-one boxes, great streaming integration. I mean, they really just, they do it all. And the really cool thing that we didn't have at the show yet, but they just announced when we got back from the show is they're gonna have just a streamer. So minus out the headphone amp, minus out the extra features, ex essentially like a blue sound node on steroids, nice. right? Nice. Um, works the same way as all of the other Element series. The same app operates it, the, the Matrix Audio mm -hmm. remote control, as well as it's Rune certified, so you can control it as an endpoint. Uh, it's going to be priced around 1500 bucks. Um, you can group them, get a bunch of them to your house, put them in different rooms, just like we, we are selling the nodes for this purpose. But this yeah. is, you know, a step up over the node. The node's a good entry place to get into streaming, yeah. um, but this Great is price. sort of getting you closer to a more higher quality sounding device. So, so that was the, you know, that was the first nice. thing that you know most people uh, uh, gravitated to at the show. Um, next up, we, yeah, yeah, we stopped by Empire Jeez. Ears Table, where we finally got to listen to essentially Empire's. Empire Ears version of the uh, Odyssey that they did for right. Astle and Kern, right? They sold that exclusively through Astle and Kern. It was a limited production. It did so well that Jack decided to, you know, make a permanent staple at Empire Ears, but tweak it and improve it uh, based on customer feedback. Um, did you get a chance to listen to it? I, did. I didn't listen to it, but I, you know, I checked out all the specs. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty popping as far as all the drivers. It's got the the bone conduction driver in there for bass too, so it's yeah, sounds pretty good. Uh, bass heavy is what yeah. you would call this IM. So if you're a <laughs> bass head, oh baby, I mean this thing has got a ton of it. You know, uh, I compared it to the Odin, mm. night and day difference. These two IMs are totally different. The IM is very resolute, very detailed, very tight controlled really for the audiophile, you know, sound, if you will, yeah. whereas the Raven was just so much fun, you know, you know, great bottom end weight, great attack, really fast, um, a real fun IEM. I can't wait for that to be released. I think we're expecting this summer, is what uh, you said, around Man, then? I can't remember. I you know, like those dates June float and change all the time, yeah. but yeah, sometime yeah. this summer. Uh, next up, Astle and Kern. So this is the first time we got to take a look at the SR35. Yep. I did not get to listen to it, but what I did do is I wanted to scroll through the user interface because yep. now they're using the same user interface that's on the SP3000. Yep. It was fast and concise. You know, that was that was the one thing about the SP3000 that sort of trumped everything else on the market. The GUI interface is so fast, so responsive. That's nice. Lightning quick, yeah. searching, and the SR35 was just about the the same speed. I mean, it'll be interesting to see once you put like maybe a one terabyte card in there, you know, does it have the same power in terms of speed as the SP3000? But now they've gone to a discrete amplifier for the balanced output and a discrete amplifier for the single end input. So these circuits are totally independent from each other. So there's no confluence between the two uh, to cause any kind of uh, you know uh, noise or whatnot, carryover yeah. or so, so forth. The other, you the listened other, to it, right? Yeah, I did. It sounds 
uh, for an entry level player, it's you know next level. Improves upon the Mark II, the SR25 Mark yeah. II, um, leaps and bounds. The new thing that they're implementing is the first time that uh, an A and Normal lineup has a quad DAC setup. And so what they've implemented is a dual DAC mode for the SR35 so that you can uh, disable two DACs and just run a dual DAC setup and boost efficiency and power. Um, Save on your battery, battery life. life for yeah. up to 20 hours. And then you can still get around 14 hours uh, estimated for running in, in quad DAC mode, which is pretty impressive in and of itself. Yeah, and the AK guys said that that was sort of the highlight at their table for the yeah. show. I mean, everybody was coming to see the SR35, so I'm yeah. really excited about that. Uh, what was next? And then the uh, the CA1000T, again, oh, yeah. it's not terribly new, but, uh, you know, just a revamp on the on the original CA1000 just with a with a tube circuit in there. Yeah, that um, thing's amazing. We had that yeah. at our table, and it's basically sort of the same architecture as the SP2000T, yep. but in a desktop uh, uh, fashion where you can change between the tube mode the um, um, and the op amps, and so you can either gauge it for very warm, very mm -hmm. analytical, or halfway between. Really cool. Super versatile Tons device. of power. Yeah. You know, we found with the original one that you can drive the SUS Vara. I haven't had a chance yet until we get all our gear back to see if this one drives the SUS Vara as well. But, you know, lots of bells and whistles and incredible desktop piece. Great products. Next up was the Warwick Acoustics, yeah. which never disappoints. <laughs> you know, they've got that crazy... Um, uh, the framery pod. Yeah, yeah. An yeah. Anico so basically an anechoic <laughs> chamber for the show. When you step into it, I mean, your voice just drops off. I mean, yeah. it's, it's nice. dead silent in this thing. And it, it makes doing demos, uh, especially with high dollar items like this, where you really want to see what it can do, yeah. you know, in terms of detail and resolution without the crowd around you really disturbing you. And you know, uh, you know, I've said this before about the Aperio. I mean, it's it's an end game setup, and and not just for headphones. Uh, the 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 piece of tech that's the headphone amp, the DAC. Uh, it's a preamp. It's Ooh. a Rune endpoint. I mean, we've used this in our showroom with a Pass Lab speaker amplifier with speakers. You know, so it's not just for headphones. I mean, it's you know, it is not a cheap item, and uh, and I would look at it more in the approach of you know an end game headphone but also an amazing front end piece for your speaker system yeah, so for sure um we had some good uh <clears throat> one-on-one -on -one moments in in the pod what i think we'll be releasing in a in a future video right so, uh, so excuse tuned, yeah. my exciting cursing at the end of it but um uh, <laughs> you know it was pretty special so anyway uh, next up, DCS. D yeah, DCS. Yeah. We had Emron from DCS step by and and, and give us you know some uh, feedback and 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 thoughts on the Lena and the Bartok Apex, which was just yeah. released, and and we just actually got to do a comparison uh, at the last show, uh, at the Florida show, where we uh, got to hear the differences between our demo Bartok and our demo Bartok Apex edition, and the difference is pretty substantial. Mm. Um, I, you know, I would have thought it would, it would have been marginal. I mean, usually when you do these sort of uh, upgrades, they aren't dramatic. I can't say that it was night and day, but at this price level, it was pretty yeah. dramatic for what you're going to pay to upgrade your old one if you want to, or, you know, it's much better than the, uh, uh, the original one. So it's, it's a, an amazing piece. And obviously, we had the Lena stack there. I mean, these two pieces at the table were probably used more than anything on the yeah. table. I mean, everybody wants to listen to them, and everybody wants to listen to them with every headphone on the table because <laughs> it's really going to let every headphone shine, and you're yeah. really going to see what that headphone can do in a really high-end system. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a nice setup. Mm -hmm. So next up, uh, uh, Pass Labs had a room. Now, we had the HPA1 at our table, but they also had a room upstairs, a speaker room. And the theme of the room was you don't have to spend a million dollars yep. to That's get awesome. good sound. So essentially what Kent from Pass Labs did was, you know, he gathered a, bu a bunch of used equipment from people that worked at Pass Labs, like there was an Oppo CD player, an old school monster power conditioner. I think every gear in that room other than the integrated amplifiers was 10 plus years old. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah. was but used awesome. old, and then they had it hooked up to an INT60, which is one yeah. of my all-time favorite pieces from Pass Labs. It's sort of a sweet point, uh, price point that is in the lineup, and 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 they had golden ear uh, uh, speakers, and the sound was glorious. Yeah. I mean, absolutely it's fantastic. Nice. You know, high-end systems don't have to cost a million dollars. If you can find that one really good statement piece, mm -hmm. you know, usually uh, a front-end piece, the speakers, and you know. 
spend a little less money on all of the other stuff. As long as you get the important pieces taken care of, you know, at least one of them get a really good staple piece in the system, yeah. everything else is going to come together and gel and you don't have to spend a million dollars. I think he said the entire system, if the prices were new, would be like 10.5, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's a, With it's all the cables, crazy. everything. So yeah. it was a cool display and a cool way to get, you know, newbies and new people into high-end audio. And I think that's that, that was one big takeaway for me is like, you know, you have one piece and you can base it off of that, and now you have an upgrade path. Yeah. And as an audiophile, that's a lot of the fun. Oh, you yeah. know, it's just upgrading as you go and piecing your system together. I actually did an interview with Joe, and Joe, I'm sorry, we actually had some technical difficulties with the audio, so we actually weren't able to, to publish the video. But, you know, check out more of my impressions on our live blog, which we can put in the, in the description below. So, yeah. So, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kent, for that. That was great. So also up at the show was iFi I I was there, um, and they had all kinds of cool new products. Their whole uh, yep. I can't. Uh, what was the uh, GoPods? So they have these um, new uh, Bluetooth uh, built-in DAC amplifiers that work with custom IMs or, or generally any of IMs that have MMCX two pin. Mm -hmm. I can't remember all the connections they're doing. We don't have all of the relevant information because this was a surprise for us. It was the first time we saw it at the show. They're a so, lot like the TM2s though, yeah, right? Yeah, very much like yeah. the Fostex TM2s. Um, so, you know, look for those. We'll have those yeah. on the website soon. I think the TM2s were a fantastic um, add-on to any custom IMs, so you can get rid of the cable uh, from a convenience standpoint when you're at the gym or something right. like that. Right. Obviously, wired is always going to sound better, but there's always a need for wireless. You know, you want to go mow, you know, mow the grass. Yep. You want to exercise. You want to run, bike, something like that. You don't want wires to get, uh, get caught on and stuff like yeah, that. For so. sure. So thank you, Rick, for showing us the whole lineup of iFi. Yeah. You know, some of our favorites: the the Griffin. The Diablo. Um, so, yeah, thank you again. The Neo. Yeah. And some fun stuff coming that we can't talk about yet, but stay tuned. Yeah. So, let's see what's next. Uh, Bricosti. So, mm. Bricosti was <laughs> the best of show room to my ears. I didn't get to, you know, it was a crazy weekend. We took a lot of people and we tried to get a lot done, and I didn't get to go to every room um, in, in, in the hotel. Uh, they had title place. speakers. We don't sell title speakers. Honestly, I've never been a huge fan of ceramic-based drivers, but the gelling between the Bricasti gear and those title speakers, and these were, I think, a two-and-a-half way. They had uh, a mid-bass driver, a bass driver, and a tweeter, and the yeah. bass that was in the room was so was tight and controlled. Yeah. The dynamics were insane. Um, so, you know... Am I a little biased because we sell Bricosti? Maybe, but at the same time, I will state when a room sounds good or bad, even if it's something that we sell. And like I said, I don't sell the title speakers, and I'm not usually a fan of those, but this was a sick-sounding room. Just yeah. amazing. Be sure to check out our interview. Jose uh, got to you know fanboy a little bit. He loves Bricosti. Thank you to Damon as well for giving yeah. us the lowdown on the new gear. But, yeah, so they have a new revamp of the M1. Yep. And then some new finishes on their other product, and they're just, it's outstanding. Yeah, it's really great. cool stuff. Yeah. Stay tuned for updates. Uh, Cord Electronics obviously yep. was there. They were being taken care of by their U.S. distributor, the Sound Org. Uh, they had all kinds of cool uh, demonstrations on different little tweaks in their rooms. Um, you know, we've we've told you about Cord all day long, every day, all the time. <laughs> so there wasn't, there weren't, there weren't really any new products from yeah. the Cord. Uh, line up there. You know, it was just another great demo by the uh, Soundor guys. Mm -hmm. um, they had all of their other gear that they sell as well through their distribution. Good time. Always a great time to hang out with uh, Bryce and Tom McGee. Is, this is the first time I met Tom at a show. I always, we've talked to him a million times. You know, he takes care of our orders here at Moon Audio. You know, big thanks out to him for helping us all the time. For sure. Thank you, Corn. Now, we had Joe Madonia come and check out. So Joe came in. You should check out our, our interview with him because he has a very uh, interesting take. He came in, like, uh, just really not digging the cable difference, you know? So he wanted to check some stuff out, and he had recommended, uh, one of his friends had recommended uh, Moon Audio Dragon Cables to him. So he came in, and he was blasting away for a while on some of the cables, and Lo and behold, he, he heard something. Yeah, he, he so. if I remember, I think he brought one of his own headphones mm -hmm. and then he used the headphones that he owned um, at our table to do some comparisons between the stock cables and the Dragon cables. And we had really no idea sort of, I well, I had no idea why he was 
um, you know, what he was looking for or why he was there while he was doing all this demoing. But he was trying to see if there was actually a, a sound difference between the stock cables and our dragon cables. And, you know, he was pretty blown away and, yeah. and immediately, even in a noisy environment, can tell the, could tell the differences. Yeah. So. Um, so that was a really cool video from, you know, one of our um, new um, friends and yeah. new buyers of our dragon cables. Yeah. Next, we, we uh, Ross and I headed down to the expo hall, which was a different experience in and of it. Were you, did you? Yeah, get I went to in there. It's, it's almost like a small show within a yeah, show. It's, cool. it's you can buy records there. You can buy all kinds of tweaks there. They had some headphone setups. They had some speaker setups. They had just a little bit of everything. They Vintage had a car. Equipment. They had a car set up there, I think, as well. I mean, all car kinds audio. Of stuff. They yeah. had all sorts of stuff. They had vintage equipment there that was just unreal to check out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Ross is going to post a picture of this uh, yellow submarine turntable that I wanted to buy, but I didn't. So yeah, it was tough. <laughs> cool but yeah, stuff. very very different experience from the from the rest of, rest of the show. But uh, really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Uh, next, we checked out uh, Odyssey, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, got to speak with Richard a little bit. He gave us the lowdown on the new MM100s. Uh, those are going to be a big hit, I think. And then the Maxwell, which I was really excited uh, about as a gamer. Uh, they're just really next level. The imaging was awesome. I hope we can pick them up. So, so, We've but, got yeah. some demos on the way. <laughs> Ooh, they're, yeah, they're really, really, really good. Um, so more information on the mm100s in particular too on our live blog which you can you can check out there but odyssey always a great headphone ton yeah. of ton of options there to uh, check out their their playing our sound just absolutely awesome yeah, yeah. uh and then meze got to speak with alexandra and alex from all the way from romania from meze boy. oh dude yeah could, <laughs> could you tell in the video uh but yeah we got to check out the new tungsten uh finish on the elite uh, yeah, Ross is pointing at, at, uh, at my bracelets here. I always wear them. I never take them off. So, uh, yeah, the new Tungsten Elite. Um, it's just a new finish on the Elite. Uh, looks really awesome. I really like it a lot more yeah, than the... Really industrial looking. You don't yeah. have to worry about, like with the Elite, you know, you always have to worry about fingerprints because it's that mm. chrome finish and whatnot and really yeah. easily susceptible. If you scratch it, you're going to see it. Whereas the Tungsten yeah. is a more sort of rough iron industrial look. Textury, I think it's yeah, yeah. really cool. I yeah. think it's, of, of all of the finishes so far from uh, Meze, I think that's my favorite so yeah, far. Yeah, it's really, really sleek cool. looking. Yeah, yeah, they had their whole uh, headphone uh, line up there from the 99 Classics to the 109 Pros to the Lyrics to the Empyreans, the Elites. It's just, they're excellent, excellent headphones. Uh, highly recommend them. So be sure to check out that interview that I had with Alexandra from Meze. Focal and Name. Focal and Name. We Woo. did a huge video Quiet in their room. room. They had, yeah, they had, you know, when they come to a show, they come to a show. They brought a ton of gear. I mean, it was a massive display. Uh, we got the lo lowdown on all of the new speakers. Um, there's a lot of information here. Um, so, you know, I think the best thing to do is really check out that video because we go in yeah. over it. We, we uh, met with Chris Shaw and, and Tom and they went through all the new stuff and we went over the name gear as well. Um, you know, just tons of stuff, man. So check out that video when, when we post it. It's a great one. Yeah, it's going to be really, really good. And then a render. A render. So, I, I, you know, if you guys don't know this, I'm a die, <laughs> die hard a render user. I mean, I love, yeah, I love their gear. You know, it's it's over designed, over built, sounds fantastic, yet so simple to use, right? I mean, that's the key. They they're, they're very Apple esque in their nature of how they uh, you know they set up their their uh, controller app yeah. for for all of their servers. They had some really cool new products with a, uh, a new clock, uh, the MC10. They had an amazing new uh, product, the uh, AP20. Am I getting that right? I think it's the AP20, so. yeah. um, which is an all-in-one integrated amp streamer uh, preamp. It's even got analog input. So if you want to add like, you know, a phono preamp and a turntable to it, <laughs> you can do it, I mean, it is literally an all-in-one system headphone output. Um, I, I don't think they forgot anything on this. Uh, the, the retail is going to be 22000 and it's worth every piece. Mm. Because you think about all the different pieces you've got to get, it's going to cost a hell of a lot more than 22000 yeah, to sure. get the quality and all those items in that device. Really cool. Uh, Ari did a fantastic job of walking through all yeah. the models. We have another huge video on that one, so make sure to check that one out. Great products. Yeah. Great products. Um, anything else? Anything else? Um, Closing thoughts? 
I mean, um, hell of a show, hell of a show. So show. I'm awesome going to I'm going to give a big thank you to Nam for doing their show on the same weekend, because <laughs> actually, you know, they took away some vendors from this show yeah. and the turnout for this show was higher than last year. So that meant more people at our table versus other vendors tables. Yeah. Uh, you know, can't thank complain. you, Nam. Yeah. I can't complain. <laughs> it was an amazing show, probably one of the best shows for us to date. Um, in terms in terms of uh, attendance and the amount of material, we, you yeah. know, the the all the uh, blogs we did, the videos, the pictures, the you know, gathering together with all these manufacturers yeah. intensely all weekend long, it was a blast. Um, I am exhausted. I don't think you can tell from how hyper I am right now, but <laughs> I'm going to sleep all weekend because I'm both physically and mentally drained from the show. Long show. Yeah, awesome. I mean, thank you again to all of our brands uh again to the guys behind the scenes too ross and will and daryl and drew nicole and, and nicole jose and jose and just yeah it was team effort huge was, effort yeah. huge effort big show we could go on for ages about expona 2023 but i think that just about covers it for our favorite moments uh, once again you can check out our short videos from expona at the playlist link below and be sure to check out our live blog from the show and more at moon-audio.com, also linked in the description below. And stay tuned for some in-depth videos on Focal and Name and a render. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe so you don't miss all of our latest reviews and videos here at Moon Audio. Uh, think we missed something or want to share your thoughts on Expona? Leave us a comment below. As always, thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.